I'm Bob Fulberg. I am the founding dean of the Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. It's one of those medical schools that has a long name. So for the rest of this proceedings, it will be known as OUWB. So welcome to OUWB and our fifth white coat ceremony. To some extent, it is something to celebrate. So that's totally appropriate. I must tell you that to some extent, this white coat ceremony is a mirror image of commencement. Uh, we had our first graduation here, it seems like only a couple of weeks ago, back in May. And the similarities are stark. Here you're going to receive a garment, your white coat, a symbol of physicianship, and you will make a commitment to the study of medicine by taking an oath. In a commencement, you'll receive your hood, your academic title as doctor of medicine, and once again, you'll make a commitment. The difference is at commencement, the oath that you recite will be written by your class. It'll be written by you with the help from Professor Wasserman and De Beers. So we're looking forward to seeing what you are able to accomplish over the course of, of, of this time. Many families are here to celebrate, and we are grateful for your participation. We do know that there are a number of students here whose families could not make it for this ceremony. And even though we are streaming this live and it will be recorded and available for download, it's just not the same if your family's not here. But if you're in that situation, may I invite you to consider all of OUWB for today to be your family. There are many people here whom we need to recognize for their contributions to OUWB and this event. Uh, gratitude is a key value at OUWB. And before I start, I would really like to thank everyone at Meadowbrook Hall for hosting this event. Uh, if you're not from the area, and most of you actually are not, please take the time to explore the grounds and consider coming back and visiting Meadowbrook in depth. And we thank the university for that. I'd like to thank the staff of OUWB for helping to stage this event. Many names. I'm going to give a specific shout out to Colleen Arnett in the Center for Medical Student Services for helping to organize this orientation week and this particular event, and everyone who worked with Colleen. I'd like to recognize today some of the people who make OUWB work for us. And at this time, briefly, if you are a member of the faculty, staff, in any way connected to OUWB except for students, may I ask you to rise and be acknowledged. Thank you. With us today representing the university is George W. Hine, president of Oakland University. Representing Beaumont Health, Dr. David Wood is chief medical officer. Representing the board of Beaumont, Mr. Steve Howard. We also have another distinguished guest here that I'm going to give a special shout out to, and that is Dr. Ralph Margulis, who is one of the older members of our faculty at 93 years old, still active in teaching medical students. Ralph is an inspiration to us all. Before we go on, I mentioned gratitude as being a core value, and I'd like to invite Mr. Mike Herbert up uh, to join me here. Um, we're going to give a special thanks to Mike in his role of being the Assistant Dean for Clinical Affairs for this school. I've been in academic medicine for quite some time, longer than I'd like to admit publicly, and I will tell you that there are only a handful of people in the United States with a level of expertise in faculty affairs, when they relate to the clinical setting, practice management, and how that intersects with the teaching mission. Mike has worked with Wayne State University, the University of Michigan, what is now called Georgia Regents University, formerly called Medical College of Georgia. And it's Mike who really helps us in a critical moment of our development to set up for us how the clinical faculty articulate with the School of Medicine. Now sadly, Mark is separating from Beaumont and leaving OUWB. But we reserve something very special for a handful. The only person who has received this honor before was Ananias S. D. Okno, the former chief medical officer. And we are presenting Mike with a special OUWB chair, which has an inscription on the back, in gratitude for exceptional commitment and service to OUWB. Please join me in thanking for our appreciation, extending our appreciation to Mr. Mike Herbert.
There are many highlights to this program. Uh, the actual giving of the white coat, the taking of the oath, but I must tell you that at OUWB, there is a tradition, and that tradition was established by Dean Nuzzarello. Her introduction of the class is something that is anticipated every year. So for the rest, re most of the remainder of the program, I'm going to call upon Dean uh, Angela Nuzzarello, Associate Dean for Student Affairs, to join me and to introduce to you the class of 2019. I'd like to start by thanking the class of 2019 for bringing all the sunshine. We're enjoying it. I'd like to take just a couple of minutes and tell you a little bit about this remarkable group of students that make up the class of 2019. Please enjoy a slideshow presentation of our newest addition to the OUWB family. You, the class of 2019, are amazing. You have visited over 105 countries, including Amsterdam, Bahrain, Bosnia, Fiji, Mozambique, and Qatar. You have completed studies at over 57 different undergraduate institutions, and as a group, report having spent well over 105,000 hours providing service to your local community, school, and abroad. Over the past four years, you have been cheering with Bulldogs, Bobcats, Bruins, and Buckeyes, Cougars and Cardinals, Gators and Grizzlies, Hoosiers and Huskies, Ravens, Swoop, Thunderbirds, Anteaters, Wildcats, Seawolf, and of course, Wolverines, Toreros, Aggie, Gaucho, Zippy, and Oski. Gus the Lion, Gunrock the Mustang, Marty the Martlet, Sparty the Spartan, Ollie the Owl, Sebastian the Ibis, W the Warrior, Mac the Marauder, Drake the Devil, Boomer the Bear, and Boohoo the Bear. I don't make this up. Flying Dutchman and Running Rebels, Blue Streaks, Golden Gophers, Golden Bear, Trevor True Blue, Sage Hen, Blue Jays, Green Wave, Yellow Jackets, and Otto the Orange. Some of the things you told us about your favorite service project are, you enjoyed volunteering for Dance for Parkinson's, a bi-monthly dance and exercise class of community members living with Parkinson's disease. Not only did it help improve coordination, but it fostered a sense of community by helping patients connect with one another. The Knight Ministry in Chicago provided food for the homeless, interacting with and learning the stories of those experiencing significant physical, emotional, and financial challenges provided you with important perspective. Volunteering as a camp counselor for Camp Make a Dream was particularly meaningful because the session you volunteered at was for siblings of cancer patients. Having a sister who suffered from cancer, you were able to make a strong connection with the kids. UC Irvine Health Patient Experience Program helped you learn that you wanted to be a physician who advocates on behalf of patients who cannot or were afraid to speak up for themselves. You learned that each patient, regardless of who they are or where they are from, deserves excellent care. Working with hospice patients provided deep satisfaction as well as sincere reflection on the course of your own life. Working with Mission Honduras, visiting HIV positive children and severely mentally and physically handicapped children challenged your compassion spiritual growth, and conviction for healing the afflicted. Camp Kesem, a camp for children with a parent with cancer, helped you grow as a person and become more compassionate and appreciative of the human condition. It inspired you to be more resilient and served as a great example that we must appreciate what we have. 
Spending time with homeless youth motivated you to work toward breaking down the stigmas and stereotypes associated with homelessness. Cooking for veterans at a shelter provided an opportunity to give back to those that served our country and learn from them. Hearing praise from such men for your contribution was a humbling experience. You worked as a basketball coach for students with autism. At the end of the season, you had an awards banquet. To see their smiling faces and their parents so proud of them was the best way to end a great season. The remote area medical clinic provided free health care service to the underserved in Seattle. The experience opened your eyes to the leadership potential of physicians in a community and the difference volunteers can make as a team. Alongside Ecuadorian natives, your work with the Forest Conservation Project gave you the unique opportunity to carry out hands-on service against the backdrop of the beautiful Amazon rainforest. You worked to reforest the Amazon by collecting and replanting tree saplings, clearing dying banana groves, planting square patches of yucca, and building a bamboo bridge to tra traverse a large river. Your time at Teach for America taught you a lot about people, equity, and the community, and how we can contribute as physicians. Working at an HIV clinic in South Africa was an eye-opening experience because not only did it show you the effect HIV has on a personal level, but it also taught you the importance of compassion at every level of healthcare. Being able to be a kid again while making underprivileged youth feel valued were benefits of being an at-risk youth mentor. The work with the Special Olympics was especially rewarding because you have a younger brother with autism and working with individuals with disabilities is important to you. We also asked you about your hobbies. When you're not studying, you enjoy music. We have amongst us a lead guitarist while in a high school band, pianist, at least a dozen of you, and one of you studied classical piano for 11 years. You write and perform music. We have flautists and drummers. You enjoy music, mixing, and singing. The foodies among us love brewing beer and making sushi. Some of your favorite ways to stay active include hiking, break dancing, sailing, soccer, wakeboarding, running, many of you, high intensity interval training, weightlifting, whitewater rafting, basketball, tennis, skydiving, scuba diving, dancing, motorcycle racing, yoga, taekwondo, walking, mountain biking, kayaking, and CrossFit. Other activities that you like include driving ATVs and dune buggies, fishing, hunting, golf, and frisbee. The artists among us enjoy sketching, painting, interior design, drawing magna cartoons, scrapbooking, and photography. Other activities that you enjoy are traveling, going to air shows, grilling outside, learning new languages, gardening, building computers, playing board games, re-watching random episodes of Gossip Girl on Netflix. Many of you are avid readers. One of you mentioned that all the hobbies you have are more fun with Alyssa, your wife. We asked you to tell us something interesting about you, and we found out that you are a Whitney Houston lip sync master. You are a left-handed only child. You tried out for track for the first time as a senior in high school and took third place in the state long jump. You were attacked by a red panda when doing panda research in China. You dissected a hyena. You, claimed, you climbed the Great Wall in heels just because. You hiked to the top of two mountains, one in the Swiss Alps and one in the Colorado Rockies. You are addicted to pumpkin pie. One of you is terrified of bugs, one has an irrational fear of crickets, and one just slightly afraid of the dark. 
you have a pet hedgehog and you were on a collegiate dragon, collegiate dragon boat team. One of you restored a 1978 moped to working order. And one of you got engaged on the big screen at a Red Sox game at Fenway Park in 2013. One of you tries to bake new things by combining random recipes and seeing how they turn out. For example, Cinna Brown Ookie Rolls. You can type 140 words per minute trying to break the world record. One of you was a weather forecaster for the Air Force. One of you really likes naps. I'm with you there. One of you is a huge fan of British history, and you spent a lot of time this summer reading up on the Tudor period. One of you lost 50 pounds last year, and one of you lost 80. You once held your breath for three minutes and six seconds. You are a grown man and cried real, actual tears after watching the series final of Lost. <laughs> you feel you may be the only person in this world who liked the ending. Your dream job is to be an astronaut. One of you has never experienced real snow in your entire life. You've come to the right place. <laughs> and lastly, you mentioned that your left ear pops out a little more than your right ear. It's OK. You're part of the family. Thank you, class of 2019, for sharing a bit about yourselves. We look forward to being your partners in education for the next four years. Can we give them a hand? The donning of the white coats marks the beginning of each student's journey to becoming a physician. For more than a hundred years, the white coat has been worn by physicians and students, symbolizing the trust between patient and physician. Today, in the presence of family and friends, our students will be welcomed into the profession and ceremonially cloaked by their PRISM faculty member. The PRISM mentor is a Beaumont physician who will guide a group of students over the next four years. The mentor will provide support as they grow both personally and professionally. We feel that it is fitting for the mentor to mark this event by assisting each stu student with their coat for the first time. Our physician mentors for the class of 2019 are Dr. Elizabeth Lelezzi from Pediatric Neurology, Dr. Rachel Rode from Orthopedic Surgery, Dr. Brett Todd from Emergency Medicine, Dr. John Tu from Internal Medicine, and Dr. Esther Young from Neurology. They're already forming a group. We like this. By establishing this ritual at the beginning of medical school, we're reinforcing the notion that the responsibility of being a physician starts today. This ceremony highlights the primacy of the doctor-patient relationship and the obligation to strive for excellence, to show compassion, and to lead lives of righteousness and honor. Each student will find in the pocket of their white coat a note from a Beaumont physician. It's a note of inspiration and encouragement written by a Beaumont physician as a special welcome to the OUWB family. Also on the stage with us this afternoon will be Dr. Avani Prabhakar, an elected physician at large and a member of the palliative care team at Beaumont. Dr. Prabhakar is presenting each student with a gift on behalf of the Beaumont doctors. Dr. Lelezi, please come up to the stage.
Miriam Ahmad. Tori Asso. Thomas Bebikoski. Jonathan Chan. Peter Chukwu. <laughs> Melissa Denko. <laughs> Varun Devaraj. Subash Adupuganti. <laughs> Tianyuan Fu. Muleka Gananam <laughs> Kunav Gupta <laughs> Timothy Hewitt Gayatri Jainagra Raj. Humaira Khan. Brian Lee. Eva Ma. Anthony Mells. Dina Nasir. James Christian Peterson. Joshua Powell. Kuhan Saktival. Joshua Shevkut. Fahad Shekli. Russia Tadros. Carla 
Villarreal. Thank you, Dr. Lalezzi. Our next mentor is Dr. Rachel Rode. Mohammed Ahmed. Vincent Bang. Michael Burnett. Peter Chen. Emily Clark. Tiffany Dow. <laughs> Elaine Dong. Austin Fan. Zachary Galasinski. Benjamin Combes Guillaume. Allison Gurney McMaster. Derek Huang. Simi Jandu. Noah Klein. Ivan J. Lee. Camelia Mamudian. Adrian Michelle. Brandon Wynn. Andrew Pham. Christopher Reese. Amandeep Sawana. Munali Shah. <laughs> Michelle Shaman. And we need to say a special happy birthday to Michelle. Today is her birthday.
Vincent Tang. Nicholas Von Schrott. Janice Zhao. Thank you, Dr. Rode. Next, we have Dr. Brett Todd. Jamila Al Hashidi, <laughs> Michael Baranowski, <laughs> Megan Boyk. Bing Chen <laughs> Rollin Cook <laughs> Spencer Darlin Matthew Drogowski. Karen Fernandez. Samuel Gamsky. Kelly Ann Gomes. <laughs> Michael Gaiori. <laughs> Christine Hood. David Kakish. Ashwin Kumar. Christopher Lehman. Ahmad Masri. <laughs> Megan Miller. <laughs> Jennifer Ukinboa Ikpanmosa. Ryan Pham. Rima Rida. Ross Schmeyman.
Sagar Shah. Sean Sloan. Catherine Tarantine. Kevin Matthew Wise. Emil Mulayam. Felix Owerlaru Ajulo. Razvan Popescu. Human Sadain. Zachary Schwager. Ishani Shah. Patrick Smith. Kanika Topper. Iota Waredi. Daniel Yamane. Thank you, Dr. Tu. Welcome, Dr. Young. Kishara Ariyanpur. Blake Bartholomew. Jacqueline Cameron. David Chu. Eling Dai. Mary Lee's Dirsch. Jessica DeZubnar. Devin Freudenberger. Mark Germani. Catherine Grisa. Jake Henriksen. Jean Pierre Escandar. Sanjeev Kandaya.
Derek Liali. Mary Jean Loso. Marissa Matthews. Cho Nang. Nimesh Patel. Shelby Potkin. Mark Satzer. Taylor Sellers. Vivek Shah. Daniel Solomon. Trevor Tooley. Spencer Wilhelm. Thank you, Dr. Young. One round of applause for all of our students. Dr. Nuzzarello, thank you so much. What happens next is actually a continuation of a session that we had on Monday. I had the privilege of conducting what we call the first class. And we're gonna finish that up kind of to wrap the week up. And so I'm gonna be talking directly to the class of 2019, inviting everybody to listen in and eavesdrop. And then we'll bring you back into the conversation in a moment. I don't know why, but I always get the, the best times to teach seven o'clock in the morning, three to five on a Friday afternoon. So last Friday, I was at Beaumont Royal Oak working with the M3, the third year medical students. And you know, there's a great bonding among OUWB students until they hit the third year, and then it's such a trauma for them because they separate into tracks. It's the pathway that they take through the various clinical rotations, and all of a sudden they're not together as a class anymore. And for a number of reasons, we bring them together one, a, one day a week, one day a month, rather. And we have what's called an assembly day. We cover topics. So for whatever reason, the speaker who was assigned to give a session summarizing leadership and medicine couldn't make it. I was pulled in in the last minute. So a week ago, 3 o'clock, Friday afternoon, me and them, it's a gorgeous day. We've got to do something on leadership. So the session was very interactive, and it turns out that there is an interesting leadership curriculum in the school. We're going to look at it and even do a bit more in this area. But you experience leadership at OUWB. It is really not a session for today, but let me tell you what happened during this particular class. So they were broken up into their tracks, meaning the sequence in which they go through their clinical rotation. Some start in surgery, some start in OBGYN, you get the idea. And they're arranged in the room in this way. And we have various group activities. So one of the group activities that we had was by track, would you please list a minimum of three, no more than five, attributes that you associate with effective 
leadership. And it was interesting because each track had to elect a leader to basically run that particular session. And we talked a little bit about how you do this, how you identify leadership. And at the end of this exercise, the groups came back with their individual lists of attributes. And, and they nailed it. If you read the literature on leadership in medicine, they named all of the attributes that we associate with this. So the leader of one group stands up and she starts to deliver a long sentence. And I gently interrupted her and said one word, to summarize it in one word. And she said, river. So a portion of the class, the majority was stunned. They didn't know what to make of it. Some people started to laugh. And I had to use this, seize this as a learning moment. So for the folks that were laughing, I said, all right, so what strikes you as funny about this? It's a weird, off-the-wall idea. But understand that to be in a creative environment, we need to nurture ideas that are new and fresh. So before we pass judgment on this, let's get an explanation from this group. What do you mean, river? And Dr. Mokoulis was there. I think this is an accurate representation of what happened. Is it not, Well, So she stands up and she said, well, our group believes that river is the perfect metaphor for leadership. It cuts through uncharted territory. It flows rapidly. It can bring multiple streams with it. It rushes. It was awesome. At the end of that, the room burst out into applause. So with that became an opportunity to divert from the lesson plan and to talk a little bit about the language of leadership. So this is what we said. I said, look, when you go to leadership training classes at the Association of American Medical Colleges, one of the first things that they teach you to do is to change how you use English. And one of the first things they teach is whenever you're tempted to use the word but, substitute the word and. I'll give you an example. It was a great party but, well, as soon as you said it was a great party and the but said it wasn't a great party. So what leaders are taught to say is, it was a great party, and next year, we'll plan to have more food. Get the difference? So the same thing, but it's more constructive. So our experience this afternoon, when that group came out with River, and we were stunned, and some of us began to laugh because we didn't know what it meant, is an opportunity for us to explore another way to use language and leadership. So you'll say, well, I didn't come to medical school to be a leader, but actually you did. Because there isn't a time in your professional life when you're not showing leadership. It could be at a time of a crisis, like a cardiac arrest, and you have to coordinate a team. You're elected to a committee in your hospital or your practice group. You need to talk to the public about what the future of medicine looks like. You're all going to be leaders. We have to practice this. So I stumbled upon a piece of wisdom a number of years ago that I always use in my research lab. So some of you don't know that I was a cancer researcher for 20 years. And this is a fabulous quote that we use to inspire research, creative thinking, and it goes something like this. Wonder, rather than doubt, is the root of all knowledge. Now, the quote's not with me. The quote comes from a 20th century uh, theologian philosopher by the name of Abraham Joshua Heschel. Wonder rather than doubt is the root of all knowledge. So I challenged the third year class to begin as many sentences as they could with the words, I wonder. And that's my challenge to you in the class of 2019. There are some reasons for doing that. You could complete the sentence by saying, I wonder what the future of medicine looks like and what I can do to help it. I wonder what new antibiotic I can create to alleviate a particular problem that I saw in a patient this afternoon. I wonder how I can create a healthcare system that provides access to healthcare for everyone universally without bankrupting everybody. I wonder, start as many sentences as you can with I wonder. And there's a precedent for this, and I've told this story a number of times, including once previously at a white coat ceremony. 
a Nobel laureate, I believe, in the area of physics. His name was Isidore Rabi. And when interviewed as to how he generated such radically new and important ideas in his discipline, he attributed this, your parents, you'll love this, he attributed this to his mother. And he said, when my classmates would come home from school, the moms would always ask, what happened in school today? How did it go? What was your day like? But not my mom. My mom asked me every day, what interesting question did you ask today? And because that became part of his mindset, he spent his life asking interesting questions. So why is it so important for you to keep saying to yourself, I wonder? Look, the white coat ceremony is the same as a sugar high. You experience it today, and you know, after the work comes online, three to five weeks from now, it becomes the, I'm going to class, I'm incorporating this, I'm working as hard as I possibly can, and you'll forget a little bit about the glow of the white coat ceremony. What keeps you going is your self-image, that goal that you self set for yourself, what you aspire to do, to use the language of Oakland University. That goal keeps you going through days that aren't maybe as spectacular as today. And that mindset is created by you repeating to yourself, I wonder. You see, that positive mindset is so important because we can use language in a negative way. I have heard medical students say to me in the presence of their friends, I know I can't pass this test. So I turn to them and I say, that's one of your friends, right? Yeah. Would you ever say to her, I can't pass that test? Oh, well, why are, you having that converse, why are you having that conversation with yourself? I wonder how I can get through whatever obstacle I need to get through to advance myself. May I challenge you, the class of 2019, to pay careful attention to something you've never heard. Right before commencement, the evening before commencement, the chairs of Beaumont, the chairs of your clinical departments, prepared a video that was shown. The last person to speak on the video couldn't be here this afternoon. It's Dr. Craig Stevens, who is our chair of radiation oncology. But this is what he said, and this is what inspires my message to you today. He said, it is a wonderful thing to be a physician. It is a wonderful thing to see a patient who may be at death's door and then shake their hand when they're leaving the hospital. Never lose the wonder of being a physician. And those who were here that evening, I think that's a pretty good paraphrase of the message that Craig delivered that night. So now, I ask you to prepare to make a commitment to the study of medicine, to the recitation of a classic formula known as the Declaration of Geneva. Uh, if you're uncomfortable calling it an oath, you can call it an affirmation or a declaration. It's interesting because we ask you to recite it as a group, not individually, but collectively. And the reason for that is you're not doing the you're not doing this individually. You are doing this as a community. The patch on your white coat, as we've mentioned before, is a circle. There are two circles on the patch, and there's a picture of the patch in the program. Two colors one for the university, one for the health system, which is our partner. Two circles, because a circle's community, you can contain an infinite number of points on a circle, but if one point drops off the circle, you have broken the community, teaching us that everybody in a community has infinite value, and there are two circles, because OUWB is a community designed to serve its community. And then, of course, there are two circles for yet another reason that we talked about on Monday, and that is at OUWB, we ask you two critical questions. What do I want to do? And you answer that question by the knowledge that you learn and the skills that you master, and who do I want to be?
and the answer to both questions is given equal emphasis at the School of Medicine. So I ask the members of the class of 2019 to rise and prepare to recite with me the Declaration of Geneva. But because we are a community, I ask all physicians to rise and to reaffirm their commitment to medicine by reciting the oath together with our medical students. It's on the second page of the program. I will read a line. Please repeat the line after me. At the time of being admitted as a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will maintain by all the means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues will be my sisters and brothers. I will not permit consideration of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing or any factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. I invite the members of the class of 2019 to remain standing as others are seated. I also invite at this time the class of 2019 to show appreciation and gratitude to the people who have brought them to this time, the people who may be here, people who may not be here, and the people who will continue to sustain you through your medical studies. And now I invite everyone to congratulate the class of 2019.